Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, that's I'm next on the next one. Consideration sorry. for future items. Yes, that's what I'm. I'm uh, uh, if we're talking equity, then um, something that has not come up in any of the stakeholder groups that I believe is maybe next to hiring staff um, from diverse back, more diverse backgrounds would be um, standards-based reporting. So the way in which we... Uh, standards-based grading? Well, it, but it's not... It's, Grading, reporting, I mean, how about standards based, based, standards based practices? Standards based practices, there you go. So, to the non educators, what is that? Um, so, uh, the standard, Mr. Monty, you want to throw one out that you have? I can't think of any off the top of my head. It just more or less, instead of it eliminates the whole uh, pass fail like ABC, more or less, it says like it's, it's more skill based. So, you. Yeah. you Students will identify add three skills and kids numbers. don't pass that class so they can demonstrate proficiency. Either can do it or they skills. can't. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, well. So, so you'll no get grading. an explanation on, there'd be categories of explanations mm -hmm. on what should be achieved and they'll either be proficient meet, or meeting. It kind of came out a little bit in the remote learning when we were allowing kids to retake stuff and redo stuff mm -hmm. to show demonstrate mastery. Mm -hmm. And if oh. you think the graduation requirement discussion will be long, I think this will be long. <laughs> yeah. But so I would save this again till probably after August and probably after the budget in September sure. because this is going to be one that I think you'll you'll we'll get do some, this in uh, November. You'll get some pushback well, from, from well, the Well, if you the RBA today read a statement that said that they want to be they want to be equitable and. My, and have more equitable practices and in my opinion that is next to hiring more diverse staff that is the way to yep. be that is a huge what I listened to a woman the other day on NPR talk about she says she's an anti-racist educator and everything that she talked about are the things are the way that we talk about things where I work around the way that we evaluate student progress around around standards based practices I, I thought that she was going to say something about standards based practices but she was talking about, about being an anti-racist mm -hmm. educator mission high school in san francisco uh you can look it up on npr so i mean if you're interested and if you want i mean gina and i can bring more articles about what standards based reporting is Dr. Freitas had said in his report, I was actually, I think we need to talk about consideration of items, is what is the next step, right? And I think what you're describing or that list of items that came up from the different focus groups, maybe it's not to start a long discussion here, maybe it is a committee, a, a, you know, a, an equity and diversity committee that teases through some of the curriculum challenges, not to mention the administrative building, all, all the other challenges. Mm -hmm. and, and I think taking the discussion and bringing it to action, we need some assistance, right? We need people right. and, and I would, ideas I would on that. say that that's a good recommendation. Yeah. Like, you could bring that up at the curriculum council. Sure. And say, like, hey, if, you know, this, one of the things Dr. Freitas is working on with Kylie uh, to, to bring back to me is to find mm -hmm. some models of uh, implicit bias training. And so, and as we talked about, even with the people on the committee, like that might be something that if we end up going remotely in a month or two, that might not be something we can carry out fully this year. And then, so it's something we're going to have to, the staff's committed to taking on the long journey, we're committed to taking on the learning journey, and this would be something that would come This to. is a five year, it, it yeah. studies show that it takes five years to implement with Fidelity. So it is a heavy lift. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you sit here, like it's not something that I say tonight, you know what, tomorrow we're gonna start standards-based mm -hmm. practices. Uh, no, there's a lot of professional development. There's a lot of uh, PLC work that the teachers have to do. Dr. Freitas and his team have to be, you know, on point. Mm -hmm. and, and so there's a lot that would have to go on. Uh, and it takes five, it, uh, 
a good rollout takes five years. So it's not it's not something that again that I say. Oh yeah, let's do so that. We that put sounds it on fun. As for consideration as a future agenda item, then, and we should just bring it up at the advisory council first. Sure. Okay. Yeah, and we also want to know: Is there interest among our instructional? Coaches for this because this would be a paradigm shift and uh, how again, students I think this are is, graded. This is a huge thing that I wouldn't put on the agenda for the right. board at this mm -hmm. time. I think it's something that uh, we start with the curriculum advisory and then it goes. To, I think Deanna's recommendation of having the administration kind of lead this, right? Because is, is, if this comes out through our a subcommittee that we talked about putting together, then you know. It would be really good if that subcommittee was leading the charge, not looking like it's from the board down. Mm -hmm. Well, no, and I think I, I obviously need to do some education on this myself, and sure. you have articles, and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. I can Google, but um, but but I think there's probably multiple levers that we should be looking at, and so I think I'm I'm looking for more of a, a committee approach for big mm -hmm. picture, and obviously the expertise on the the curriculum group to really get into the weeds on this. I think it would come organically out of a conversation about equity. Mm -hmm. It would just organically come out of that conversation. And um, it, is a, it is a multi year process, but it is also best practice. It's a paradigm shift. It's a huge paradigm You'd shift. You'd have to have uh, it, the entire it is. staff be on, on board. It's a huge paradigm huge. shift. Yes. It's because a huge paradigm we shift that most districts just, have taken. And, and, and we were just trying to implement nanos, min, millimeters of it yep. throughout even the fourth quarter under the governor's direction. Yep. We got some resistance. Mm -hmm. so, and parents aren't going to see A, B, C, or D. Yep. You know, you're not going to. Well, yeah, there's a huge parent education piece as well. Right. But yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, just throwing it out yeah, there. That's but interesting. It's a, um, it's a big throw out. I know. Like, you know <laughs> why not after a four hour meeting? Sure. Put the other agenda that's right. Go out with a bang. Yeah, we go out with a bang. All right, Wes. All right. I like the idea of putting it through a subcommittee. That's fine. I like yeah. that's a good idea. Closed session. Resolution. Resolution. Um, the Board of Education Township High School District 2A Cook County, Illinois enters closed session for the purpose of considering appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, sale or lease of real property, collective negotiations, and school safety. Second. Marianne? Who's second? Oh. Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Jacobs. Sorry. Ms. Turner? Yes. 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 Oh, yes. It didn't sound like me at all. Yes. 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 All right. Oh, I got it. Oh.